Being Australian born Lebanese, this vlog's a bit special compared to my previous ones. Because it's the first time I visited the country since around the mid 90s. So around 26 years later, I was keen to hit the streets with a sense of discovery. So as soon as Sarah and I landed from Istanbul, I went out with my camera on the first day. So far my impressions are that there's a lot of character on these streets. It's really overwhelming actually, so I think I'm going to take some time to adjust to how much you know, sensory overload there is uh, on these streets, which is great for photography. Especially when it comes to the buildings, the colours and the cars and characters around uh, at least the area that I've seen so far here in Ashrafiyah. So during my first couple of days of shooting, I discovered this little photography store by chance. Uh, they apparently developed film, they even had an Olympus Mew in the cabinet, but the person working there wasn't the owner, he wasn't sure if it was for sale, but this card has their details in case you're curious. Later on Sarah and I visited this space called Art District with the works of a Lebanese photographer who was also the person who opened the space. He had some nice work being exhibited, I'll put his details in the description in case you're curious, and there was also this great workshop attached out the back. So it was cool to see a thriving art scene in the city. Later on I visited a store in the city called Photo Palladium that develops and sells film and also had a range of secondhand film cameras and lenses. I also dropped off a roll of film to try out their processing and scanning. While there I actually also bumped into a fellow film photographer who I invited across the road where I happened to be meeting my cousin. We agreed to meet up the next day for some coffee and to do some shooting. We chatted for a bit, talked shop, and I checked out this great Leica M6 Titanium that he had, and then he showed me some cool spots in the neighborhood to go shooting. Alright, I'm here with Bo. We've been out shooting the streets in uh, Burj Hamoud. Is that where we are? Definitely, yes. Yeah, we're having a good time finding some quiet little street scenes. And I just thought I'd do a, a mini interview with Mo where uh, you can tell us a little bit about yourself and what it's like being a photographer in Lebanon, shooting sure. film as well. Sure. So it's Mo. Uh, I started shooting film like four years ago. Uh, it's always super fun to shoot film in Lebanon. Uh, we have a cool community of very talented people, you should check them out. Uh, definitely go to digitalfountain.com to, to check out all the, all the Lebanese uh, photographers. You need to know where to go, but uh, overall it's very fun. Uh, you get to meet people, you get to greet people on the street, take their portraits and all of that. And you get to document uh, the country and what's going on and stuff, which is, I find that very important right now. For sure, definitely right now. And do you think that there's a lot of film shooters specifically here, or is it mostly like digital obviously, but is there enough film shooters where you can have meetups and stuff sure, like that? Sure, sure. I think overall there are like, uh, I don't know, like 30, 30 to 40 people that shoot film on a, a 
like exclusively. Uh, but people tend to shoot everything because like digital is a bit whatever is accessible. Yeah, whatever yeah. Is accessible. cool. So you mentioned that website just now called Digital what? Digital, digital Fountain. Digitalfountain.com. And where can people check out your great work, which I've seen a little bit of so yeah, far? Thank you. <laughs> uh, just uh, on Instagram, uh, my handle is ri underscore fo. That's linked to your other pages as yeah. well. Yeah, cool. So I'll put that in the, the thing below the video so people can, can find it. And uh, yeah, it's been great so far, man. We've only been shooting for like... What is it, an hour? Yeah, an hour, and an hour and a half. We've already found some, we called it like Willem Verbeek scenes and stuff, <laughs> and it's a little bit quieter here. But we'll continue shooting. Maybe I'll share some of your shots if they come out by the time I get back to Australia and make the video. Uh, yeah, it was just great meeting you and running into you at that same, cafe. So same, it's good same. to find other film shooters in Lebanon. And don't be discouraged to come here and reach out to people like Mo and some of the places that I'll put in the description. So let's keep shooting. All right. All right. After shooting for a bit, Mo needed to go and pick up a print from a photo lab that also develops film. So while there, I actually did a mini interview with the owner. photo <laughs> 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 أنا عندي هون بس كلر بس كلر فوتوشوب بس كلر فوتوشوب أنا شو كلام وشو تستعمل السكانينج يابانية فرنسية ولا بيجوا مع المكان الموريت الموريت عند السكانر تبويتا اه حلوين اوكي اوكي the next day was to be our last one in Beirut, so I headed back to Photo Palladium to pick up my film, and also wanted to see if the owner was willing to do an interview, but unfortunately I came towards the end of business hours and it just didn't work out. Okay, so I'm in Hamra now. I picked up my roll of uh, film negatives and scans from Photo Palladium, which was the store that I was mentioning earlier. Unfortunately though, the main uh, manager or owner wasn't there, uh, one of the workers was there and uh, I didn't manage to get the little interview with him that I was hoping for but uh, I'll show you some b-roll of the store and mention that uh, I was able to develop one roll with scans for about 10 US dollars which is about the same price as back home and uh, I haven't actually looked at the scans yet myself but I'll put some up on the screen I believe he uses a DSLR scanning system because he showed it to me last time which was during a busy period so you know not the uh, interview I was hoping for but at least there's some information there for you and uh, he does sell film and a whole bunch of used cameras including some medium format ones a pretty great collection for such a little store so i'll show you some of that b-roll and if you're ever in lebanon don't fear uh, because you will be able to develop film and even buy some gear if you need it including lenses cameras of a, a pretty good variety so let's move on Okay, I walked from Hamra down to this area called Cornish el Manoro, uh, sort of a coastline area where we've been a couple of times and it's approaching that perfect golden hour time. So hopefully I've gotten a few shots since then, but I'm going to continue to a spot that we noticed out of a couple of car rides uh, in Zaytuna Bay, which is not far from here. 
where I noticed a lot of people running and exercising where the light just really hits beautifully. So hopefully I'll get there and there'll be plenty of photo opportunities. I've got the Pentax 645N loaded with some Kodak Gold 200 and some Rolly Super Pan 200 in this Leica MA and more film to load after that. So this is our last day in Beirut. I want to try and get as many photos as possible to cap off this trip. Sorry about the bad exposure there, but hopefully the audio is still good and uh, I'll see you there. Okay, so as you can see, I've entered the area that I think I was uh, noticing from outside of those car rides and uh, as you also may have seen from the footage so far is that this is a very wide open area where a lot of people come to play uh, little games of whatever sport they're into or just to exercise and I remember seeing a particular a road that looked like a track, I think it was probably just this one where there may have been some kind of competition going, people running up and down, but it's a very wide open area which makes it great for creating a bit of negative space with your photography as well as having that great uh, backdrop of the uh, suburbs beyond Beirut city which uh, you may not be able to see in this exposure but I'll try and create some b-roll where it shows a little bit clearer so I'm just gonna hang around here for I think another half hour or hour even just to see what I get I hope you enjoy some of the photos Okay, I think I have had plenty of fun shooting in this area and uh, by the way for anyone who didn't catch it earlier the area is called Zaytune Bay but this specific area within that I'm not sure what it's actually called if it has a name but if you just head to Zaytune Bay and just kind of walk along the the coast you'll probably see it because there's these closed off roads at the moment it's actually not far from where I think the unfortunate explosion happened but yeah if I uh, can help guide you with maybe a pin on a map just ask in the comments and I would definitely recommend it if you are into street photography and you want to stay within the city of Beirut this is a great place to come and cap off the end of the day for golden hour because much of the light will be hitting open areas like this rather than the city which is full of buildings that will block the light so yeah highly recommended and I'm sure you'll get plenty of good shots and hopefully I did too I'll find out once I develop some of the film we left the next morning to spend two days staying in a little coastal chalet in an area near Biblos. It was a peaceful and relaxing change from the big city and from there we were able to do trips to other nearby locations like Junye and Batrun. A couple of the clips here are actually from day trips we made earlier out of the capital but I thought I would include them here for a better fit and they all come together to really showcase the beauty and variety that the country has to offer. Such as this great hike that our friend Julian took us on in the Jabal Musa biosphere. And although we didn't shoot as much during this middle section of the trip, I am actually saving a few of my favorites for release in an upcoming print publication. So check out the description for ways you can follow me to find out more about that later. After leaving the chalet, we spent a couple of days up in the mountain region, which is probably one of our highlights of the entire stay in the country. And during our couple of days up there, we experienced some equally beautiful scenery, which was made easier by the fact that we had rented a car. I will eventually put out some vlogs over on my personal channel going over this middle section of the trip to Lebanon because although I didn't do much film photography during this part we did have a lot that we went over in terms of experiences so it would be a better fit over on that channel. We returned our rental car and then had to head over to Tripoli for the last couple of nights of our stay in Lebanon. Today I'm in Tripoli, my family's home city in Lebanon and it's our last full day here in Lebanon and I want to try and discover Tripoli all over again through my camera and the day started now at seven o'clock so it's going to be a full day I want to make it as full as possible let's see how we go
You'll notice the streets are still pretty quiet this early in the morning in Tripoli, and I found that in Lebanon in general, but the light was still quite nice. And there were plenty of great scenes to photograph, regardless of how quiet it was, so I continued my walk. I just want to highlight here that Lebanon was still, at the time of our trip, going through a massive economic crisis. And not only that, but it's compounded by a gas crisis and a multitude of other issues. So this may have had something obviously to do with how quiet the streets were and the shop closures. So I was trying to be sensitive to that, especially during my time shooting in Tripoli. But I generally found that people's attitude and mood was quite positive despite all their struggles. They're also not very used to having street photographers wandering around like I was, but it helps to be able to understand and speak the language. And I think that goes a long way if you decide to shoot in Lebanon. So I wouldn't say it's essential, but it would be useful in areas where they don't get a lot of tourists. So I finished this little session in the old fruit and vegetable market, which was a great place for street photography and somewhere I could imagine waking up every morning to go shooting if it was possible. So I started walking back to my auntie's house to take a break and put the Pentax 645 back since I wasn't really using that. And on my walk, I caught a few interesting scenes that I couldn't help but photograph and got back, took my break, went for a quick haircut and then I was ready to go out later for more shooting. After spending two days in Tripoli, our time in Lebanon was coming to an end, as well as our entire holiday. And I think we managed to do a fair bit in the couple of days that we were there. I really wish I had more time in Tripoli, but maybe next time. We headed back to Beirut for one more overnight stay before flying through to Athens and then heading back to Australia after one night there. Sarah and I had a great time in Lebanon. I especially enjoyed rediscovering somewhere that I hadn't been to in so long. And I hope that you enjoyed this vlog and that you also got to perhaps discover something about a country you weren't too familiar with. I think it's a great place to visit, especially if you're into photography, and they could use all the help from tourism that they could get right now. Check out the video description for any links and further information, including upcoming content from Lebanon over on my personal channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Pushing Film video.